In this video, I'll show you how to make perfect dados, grooves, and even lap joints without a dado set, without a ruler, or a measuring tape, or any math at all. All you need is a clever little tool called a kerf maker. You can buy one, like I have, and there are some homemade versions online if you really don't want to buy one. But they do lack some of the nice features. My point is, don't run away because you don't own a kerf maker. You're going to find this principle very interesting and I'm going to be really quick. So stick with me for a minute while I show you. A kerf maker is an adjustable tool that works both as a measuring gauge and as a stop block while you make your cuts. What makes this idea so clever is it has one adjustment to account for the thickness of your table saw's blade, whatever thickness that may be, and another adjustment to account for the thickness of the workpiece, however thick that may be. It's simple, and it's fast, and you really have to see it in action. So let's start with the blade's thickness. The most precise way to set that is to cut the corner off a scrap of wood. If you put the cutoff back in place, you can see how some wood is missing from the saw's kerf. We turned it into sawdust. That's what I want to measure, the missing sawdust, because only that will account for the blade's thickness, any minor differences in any of the teeth, any run out in the arbor or anything in the table saw, any imperfections that may add up to a loose fitting joint. So the orange portion of the tool is set to the thickness of the missing sawdust and locked in place with the orange knob. If you always use that blade to cut dados and that saw, you never have to change the orange setting again. This would be a one-time setup. What you will change from time to time between different projects is the thickness of your materials. So this is set with the gray part of the tool, merely by pinching the workpiece inside and locking it in place with the matching gray knob. That is all the setup there is. It's time to put it to work. This particular kerf maker comes with a nice metal stop block. In fact, it's all metal. There's no plastic parts in any of it. There's a magnet on the end of the stop block, and there's also magnets on the end of the kerf maker tool. This makes it really nice because they snap together and you can easily hold the tool in place on your miter gauge. First, I snap the tool in position with the orange tab pointing upward, slide my workpiece against the other end, and make a cut. Then I flip the tool so the orange tab was down, slide my workpiece against the end, and make another cut. These two cuts precisely divide the boundaries of the dado. All that's left is to nibble away what's left. And the result is a perfect friction fit every single time. I love the simplicity. Here's a wider workpiece. I just reset the gray end, and I'm right back to the saw, making the same two boundary cuts, then nibbling away the waste in between. There's no complicated setup, no learning curve. You could even use it with a dado set or with a router bit, as long as they are narrower than the dados that you wish to cut. If you want to add some extra room in the joint, maybe it's too tight for glue, then add a slip of paper to your setup. And the same steps may be applied to various lap joints as well. It's very clever, in my opinion, so I thought you might like seeing it. I'll put a link to the Kerf Maker below if you want to check it out. See you next time. At first glance, you may be taken aback by the tool's stunning form or its exceptional heirloom quality. But the most common phrase heard in the workshops of Bridge City tool users across the world is, huh. Why didn't I think of that? Clever ideas, innovative features, uncompromising quality. Visit bridgecitytools.com today to see for yourself.